Hi everyone, I'm Doc Ken and welcome to National Service Training Program NSTP Chapter 7 entitled Understanding Community Dynamics. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? One is to give the different ideologies, perspectives, and steps needed in creating and implementing projects for the adopted barangays and specify the needed tools and concepts to find out the needed and suitable project on the adopted barangays. Social development is all about improving the well-being of every individual or every Filipino in a society or in a community. How will you able to do that? Of course, by understanding community dynamics. So the first step to have social development or community development is to understand community dynamics. So the changes that must be brought up to the community, what are those? Just remember the acronym SEVO COCO. SE stands for self-awareness. VO stands for volunteerism. CO stands for community builder and leader. And last CO, community needs assessment. First, let's talk about self-awareness. What do you mean by that? As a leader, in preparing for your program of activities for your NSTP2, you have to come up with a project or you have to systematically identify or create a possible project which can help solve community problems and able to meet their needs. So here, they should be the one to identify their problems, needs, and capabilities. They should become aware of what the condition of their respective community. For example, why our community has the highest rating in terms of positivity in COVID-19? Are we the one who's violating the health protocol? Do we wear masks? Do we wear facial all the time? That's a good example of self-awareness in terms of identifying their own community problems. Second is volunteerism. It's all about serving others without expecting nothing in return. Leadership is volunteerism. As a part of a community, regardless of your educational background, goals, and age, you can volunteer in order to make change. Example, climate change. You can plant a tree. You can help in terms of waste management in your community that can improve the lives of the people in the community. Because when we talk about improving the quality of life of the people in the community, it's not only in terms of wealth. It can be in terms of health, education, or other contributing factors. Third is community builder and leader. As an NSTP student, we have to impart knowledge, skills, and values that may help the people in the community that they should become a great leader or a community builder of their respective community. A community builder and a leader is an individual who always thinks of what will be the best projects or advocacy in order to lessen or to solve the problems in a community. Community builders and leaders are the ones who create steps that will give quality and fast solution to community problems. So for example, as community builder and leader, we have to encourage everyone in our community to wear masks and face shield all the time when going outside and to observe health protocols. So here there will be improvement in combating COVID-19. Another one, in terms of environment, as community builder and leader, we have to encourage everyone to practice solid waste management for the community to lessen plotting. In these ways, the community can help another community by giving the steps and ideologies given by the leader. And lastly, community needs assessment. So in the community needs assessment, we have to identify or create a project based on the needs of the community itself. For example, in terms of health education, they are not aware of transmission of COVID-19 because of they cannot understand medical terms or language. As an NSTP student or a community leader, what are you going to do? Another one, they are not aware of climate change and their community is prone to plotting. What are you going to do? So your project must be anchored to the community needs. Let's now move on to the eight stages of community needs assessment. One, community organizing. Two, social analysis. Three, project identification. Four, feasibility study preparation. Five, project selection and approval. Six, 
project implementation, seven, project management and sustenance, eight, project monitoring and evaluation. First, community organizing. It is a process where people who live in proximity to each other come together into an organization that acts in their shared self-interest. In creating a project, the process must start in organizing the community. It is the preliminary step in developing a project. Other than the group or section spearheading the project, other key persons can also be invited to help prepare a project plan. Uh, these key persons may include the following. 1. Community members directly affected by the problems, example, youth, mothers, workers, etc. 2. Influential persons from the community, example, community leaders elected or not. 3. Experts who have been working with the said community, example, community organizers so the steps involved in developing a plan include the following one is to establish your goal and lastly to identify strategies action steps and activities to be taken next social analysis social analysis is the practice of systematically examining a social problem issue or trend often with the aim of prompting changes in the situation being analyzed. This also involves SWOT analysis, which is a technique to analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a decision, problem, or place. In community development and urban planning, SWOT is often used at the community meetings to structure conversations about quality of life in a neighborhood or a controversial project. Carrying out this analysis often illuminates what needs to be done and put problems into perspectives. Next, project identification. During this phase in the project development, the planners undergo the process of searching for potential projects directed to achieve their goals. What is the problem that you want to solve? A good project comes from a good problem definition. It's important to first identify the problem you want to address, whether it be in your country, community, or school. In general, try to describe what you want to change and why you want to change it. Fourth, feasibility study preparation. Once a particular project has been agreed upon, the next step would be to involve the planners to determine how and when the project will be implemented. Here, we have to know what evidence or data do you have to support the identified problem. You not only need a good problem definition, but it's also equally important to have solid evidence or data to prove that the problem actually exists. This implies doing some research on the problem you have identified. Sources of data and evidence can include statistics, survey results, and information from previous reports elaborated by organizations, NGOs, or government institutions. Data and evidence-based research add validity to your project. This information is crucial as it will help others understand why the problem identified is a worthy issue to tackle. Next, project selection and approval. At this stage, we want the people in the community to decide what projects they want to implement in their community. Their decision will be guided by their feasibility studies of the development projects. Once the people have already selected and approved the projects which they will implement, we want them to prepare a proposal and plan for implementing the projects. Projects usually possess various elements which can be categorized namely as project objectives, project boundaries, location, target beneficiaries, duration, methodologies, and costs. Next, project implementation. After you have carefully planned your project, you'll be ready to start the project implementation phase. In this stage, the implementation phase involves putting the project plan into action. The project is carried out by the assigned persons for the target beneficiaries during the set schedule. Also, we want to see the members of the community in taking the lead role. The actual participation of the people shall be fully harnessed in meeting their objectives. 
this also developmental process in a continuum of action, reflection, action. Seventh, project management and sustenance. Once completed, the project must be continually managed and sustained. The project must serve as an avenue for the people continuing capability building, self-reliance, and empowerment. It's very likely that the members of the community will face some obstacles and hurdles while implementing your project. True, not everything can be controlled. It is important to identify what risk could affect the project and to have a plan on how you'll respond to them, just in case. Therefore, members of the community should list the events or aspects that could potentially affect project and to determine what can be done to mitigate them as well as potential response mechanism. In this stage, what we want to do or what we want to happen is for the people to know and continuously search for more effective ways of doing things. Lastly, project evaluation. After the project has been implemented, an evaluation is usually conducted to determine whether the project objectives has been realized and if so, to what extent. In this stage, we want the people to monitor and evaluate their projects. Monitoring and evaluation are done so that the people can periodically discuss and act timely enough on whatever problems they may encounter in the project's implementation and management. In short, monitoring the project is intended to improve the project's implementation and management and make it more systematic and meaningful.